hello my lovely family greetings to you all and welcome back to my channel i'm your brother chief lamashewe yapa sewulana also known as prince ayoko sending my peaceful lovely and warmly greetings to you all wherever you are how are you doing and how is our families at your side doing i hope and pray you all doing very well wherever you are and i wish you all you know the best in whatever you do in your life all right so family i'm here once again today at a uh, mixed crop farm this particular type of farm we call it mixed crop farm so this particular mixed crop farm is a combination of sorghum and granite that is peanuts that is what the farmer planted on this land but fortunately for me, I have gotten the peanut leaves after he harvested it today. So I'm going to use the peanut leaves to feed my animals. So um, keep watching and please don't forget to share this important content with your families and friends who are into livestock farming and uh, people who have the passion to be livestock you have to learn from this so to my fellow livestock farmers this is a very great information that you have to know especially livestock farmers who are in the north or in the northern region of ghana and to livestock farmers who are having peanut farmers within their locations please watch this video it is very very helpful so thank you all for watching and please keep watching. All right, so this is how we do it. Uh, mostly, when we are collecting these granite leaves or peanut leaves, we are using this tricycle to transport it to the farm. So what we do is that during the collection, when, you are, when we are loading it to the tricycle, uh, people will be collecting it from the farm, which is here, and they will be bringing it to load it on the tricycle and someone will also be on the top just like the way i am you know compacting it so when it's done this way because it will be because it is fresh it will be well compacted and we'll be able to load more so that's how we do it livestock farming is not an easy job at all it involves a lot of hard work so you have to really work hard in order to be a successful livestock farmer. There's a lot of livestock farmers, they, they can't do this, or they might want to do this, but maybe at their locations, there's no uh, rice farms. But this particular leaves, that is the peanut leaves, it is very, very healthy for animals. It is very very healthy for all livestock including you know goat sheep cattle and the rest it is also good for horses donkeys and all of that so that is how we do it to those of you 
whose animals are with me. You can see how hard the work is. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. But, you know, work goes on. It's all about work and happiness. <laughs> so that's how we do it. When we compact it this way, it, 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 it makes us to load it more. We have the chances of loading it more when it is well compacted. Yeah. And it's also a source of exercise because all of this is exercise at the same time work so this is a very productive exercise it's not all about going to the gym wasting your energy lifting some lifting heavy metals or lifting heavy objects no that is not how we do it here we do our exercise during our work so it's all about you know Getting more health and working. It's not about going to the gym, lifting all these heavy metals, and in the in the future, your body will even shrink when you gain all of these muscles. When you stop to do that, as soon as you stop going to the gym, then your body will begin to shrink. But when you are working, and it also serves as an exercise to your body, that is very very good. Your, your, your health will be good at the same time you have what you want that is productive you will be successful in this particular exercise so we are collecting the peanut leaves at the farm and I'm here with my uh, workers so they are all helping me but the young man here the, the small boy it's not a worker. Uh, this tricycle belonged to his brother. And I hired the tricycle from his brother. So he's here to help the brother. So that's how we do things. It's all about working. You see how we do it. <laughs> yeah. So keep watching. All right, so family, I'm gonna show you the peanut leaves. So this is the peanut leaves here. After the harvest, this is how the, the leaves is. So this is the peanut leaves, as you can see. The peanut is being harvested today. And you can see, uh, this is the peanut, you can see it. This is the peanut from the shells of it. So. When you take off the peanut from the shells, this is how it looks. This is the peanut itself. Uh, some of the peanuts are tiny and some of them are big. But this particular peanut, here we call it China. So that's how we call it, China. And, some, and the, Dagbani name, the Dagbani name for this peanut is called Sembalgu. Sembalgu, that's how we call it. So mostly after harvest, to livestock farmers who really mean business they will come over to the land and then collect the leaves of the fresh peanuts so after collecting it we'll take it home and then dry it on the sun but if it is raining we don't dry it on the sun because when it gets wet it will spoil but uh, when we are able to dry it just one day it is good so the farmer, the owner of the farm is here. I met him yesterday and he's here to visit us. So I'm going to talk to him. He's, uh, he actually said he's going to sell them to me. So I'm going to do some negotiations with him and then we'll see what to do. Yeah. Okay. Nah. Yeah. 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 Blemba la vinya la ka chen ngobre bre bre na le zaha n chan ka la bna mm yeah so that is what we are doing very busy working so keep watching
And usually we don't care when our body is dirty during work because that is what the man has to do. Every man has to step up and work. Just come out from your comfort zones and work. <laughs> This is one of the best feed for livestock here in Northern Ghana. This is one of the best feed that is very good for livestock. So that's the farmer busily planting his sweet potatoes. So these are sweet potato mounds. Yeah, it's a very big sweet potato farm. So he's currently planting. He's currently planting the sweet potatoes. So to the sweet potato lovers, you can see how it is being planted. It's just the the uh the vines that he used to plant. So he cuts the vine and then plant it on the mound, on top of the mound. So it is easy to get sweet potatoes, uh, vines to plant. Oh, okay. I'm asking that, I'm asking him that how long will it take for him to start harvesting? And he said, at least in three to four months it should be ready and you see one thing that I'm always talking about see he has used the animals dunk he applied it on the on top of the mound just around the sweet potato and it will add more facility to the soil so you see what we are talking about both livestock farmers and crop farmers are benefiting from each other you see I just came and I'm collecting granite leaves at his farm. And he has also gone to a different livestock farm and then collect the animal's dung. That's the animal's waste. And then came and apply it on his sweet potato mouse to make the sweet potato more fertile. So you see how it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's all good because we are benefiting from each other and we are really helping each other, you know, to grow. So that is exactly what we have to do. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what we have to do. Yeah. So uh, it is good that we come out with these ideas. It will help us a lot. Yeah. And these are the same mounds that they used to plant cassava and uh, yam. So his cassava farm is over there. It's right there. Just on the side of the sweet potato yeah so yeah it's all work and happiness after drying the granite leaves or peanut leaves we'll soak it with salt water so what i mean is that we we'll use salt water to apply to it or to sprinkle on it and then dry it again so that it will have salt taste because animals love salt so much so it will make them to eat it to eat it more yeah it will have some more taste so that the animals can eat it more and get to drink a lot of water and you know when animals drink a lot of water, it, it, it increases their health and it you know, makes them grow so big and gain so much weight. And you know these animals, it's all about the weight, <laughs> especially 
uh, the male ones, that's the bulls, and the male sheep and the goats. When they become big, their prices also become big. <laughs> so yeah, family, that is the tips that I'm just sharing. Uh, I'm going to make sure that before this harvest season ends, I'll be able to package about 10,000 bags of peanut leaves. I'm planning to package about 10,000 bags of peanut leaves. So I have a whole bunch of work to do, but I will definitely do it. And like I said, uh, in this world, it is not easy to get anything. Everything is all about money, money, money. In the past, we were getting these peanut leaves from the farmers for free. But due to the cost of things, it is also making them to sell it for us, which is normal to me. I think it's normal because uh, farmers do a whole lot of work at their various farms. It's not easy. Farming is not an easy job. It's a very, very big job. So at least uh, this is two acres of land. This farm is two acres of land. So during our, negotiate, uh, our negotiations, we've come into agreement and I'm going to pay him uh, the price of an acre of land. You know, it is farm tractors that plow these lands for them to plant their crops. So I'm going to pay him the money of one acre so that uh, it will be able to help him within the next coming uh, season, that is next year. Next year, he will still he can use that money to add an additional one acre to make it three acres. When we are able to help each other like this, it will be good. Uh, it will be very, very good when we are able to help each other like that. And he also has another farm nearby. It is cassava and uh, uh, sweet potatoes. So this farm, this farmer is not a joke. This farmer is a very, very serious farmer. And I love hardworking people. I love people who are hard workers. Look at one person using these lands. It's about four acres. And he's using two acres for cassava and sweet potatoes. You can see the mounds over there. So he's using these two acres over there for uh, cassava and sweet potatoes. And using this one here, right here, that we are collecting the uh, granite leaves for, uh, he's using this particular two, he used this particular two acres for uh, peanuts and guinea corn or sorghum, like I already said it in the early stage of this video. So, uh, this is what we have to do as Africans, always eat what we produce, always eat what we farm. When we do that, our health will always be good and we'll, we'll be able to live in this world for a longer period. And it will also be good when we work more, more on agriculture. It will be able to reduce the tension in Africa. Talking about the tension, I'm talking about the famines, the hunger, the poverty, and all of that. It will be able to reduce the poverty in Africa and make everybody live a good life. So to those who are farming at their various homes or backyards, uh, please continue to do that. But when you have the opportunity to go to the farm, to at least get one acre or two acres or 10 acres or 100 acres, please do that. Uh, in everything that you do, you have to be upgrading yourself in whatever you are doing. You have to upgrade the things that you are doing. When you upgrade the things that you are doing, it makes you more productive and more successful. So please take this lesson very serious and it will help all of us. So talking about livestock farmers and farmers as in general, we have so many types of farmers. We have farmers who are just peasant farmers. They are just farming for them and their families to eat. They don't farm for money or they don't farm to sell for money. But uh, the other part of farmers are the farmers who farm 
for money and you know and and all of that so yeah keep watching family and please don't forget to share this content with your families and friends especially with the livestock farmers uh, during the dry season you will see a whole lot of livestock farmers complaining our animals has run out of food they are hungry they are dying and all of that and to me when i look at all of that i see that as something that is not serious because uh during the harvest season we have all of these peanut leaves that you see here that you can just go to the farmer talk to him if he has to sell it for you then you buy stock it in the dry season you bring it out and start feeding your animals because this time it's, it's still raining and there is greener pastures for the animals to eat there's green grasses everywhere there's fresh grasses everywhere that the animals can graze on or whatever it is so this time the animals don't have problem but th the time that they have problem is the dry season that is when the bushfires will come that is when people will burn the bushes and everywhere will just be like a desert so during that times animals are going through hell they go through a lot of hunger and it's not right so when it happens like that it's like we the owners of the farm uh, of the livestock who are giving them that punishment so we have to think about all of this and and think again to see whatever we can do so that we'll come out and collect all of these uh leaves that is the granite leaves you know even when they harvest the corn we can use the leaves to uh to stock it you see so when we stock all of that in the dry season our, our animals will not suffer again they will not be hungry again it is only water that will be our problem and definitely we'll find a source of water to make them drink and and become more big for us to sell and make money you see so we have to always be very serious in whatever we are doing very very be focused you know stay focused in whatever we are doing and you know put laziness on the side you see nothing good comes easy so we have to really work hard for whatever we want yeah so family keep watching <laughs> This is some very serious positive vibes that I'm sharing with my fellow livestock farmers. So please take note and, you know, think twice and use this to work. It will help you work with this. It will definitely help you in the future. One thing I love about livestock farming is that it also creates job for the youth. It creates job opportunities for the youth, especially the youth who are not lazy it creates a lot of job opportunities for the youth who are not lazy because they say that there's no food for the lazy man you can't just sit at your comfort zone and get whatever you want especially you can't sit at your comfort zone and eat all of that you know sweet foods <laughs> you have to really come out and work for it so uh, that's one thing I've been doing for the youth uh, in the community creating jobs for them bringing them to the farmland to work uh, and so far so good uh, the youth love me and I love them and we all do whatever we can to make the future brighter so this is what we have to train the youth to do. Uh, I'm training them at the same time, paying them. So when they get to know all of this in the future, when they also become farmers or let's say either crop farmers or livestock farmers, they will be able to know whatever you know it takes to do the job. So they wouldn't have any problem. So these two guys, that is Dawuni and uh, Muhammad Awal, they are all here, you know, very hard working helping the, for the work to go faster and after that they will get paid so they are being paid daily so they started everything today they started the work today and they are going to get paid today and tomorrow they will come back and continue so that is exactly what we are doing we have to really empower the youth put them into work and give them a future a better future so yeah, keep watching family.
our animals has already started to enjoy the granite leaves. They love it when it's fresh and they love it when it's dried. They are just rushing to get it, so I decided to just give them a little bit of it. See, they are fighting over it. <laughs> And most of our female cattle are pregnant. Yeah, almost the majority of the female cattle here at the farm are pregnant. So we are waiting for babies in the next seven to eight months. And some of them are indoors. Biggie, landlord, and hero are over there fighting. <laughs> Biggie has grown so more big. He has get super bigger. He's becoming more biggie and biggie. And landlord is also there enjoying. This is landlord. He's trying to fight with uh, hero. Hero, hero, hero is more stronger than landlord. Wow, they are just showing their strength. <laughs> showing their strength. Hero and landlord is showing their strength here. Hero, landlord, and Biggie. <laughs> That's the strong man. At the farm. That is the job. Being a livestock farmer is not a day job. And to be a man is not a day job. <laughs> <laughs> when people are successful, a lot of people will not think about how they started everything. All they will say is that this person is rich, this person is rich. But see what it takes to be rich or see how you know see what takes a person to become successful that is to become rich you have
have to wait for it. <laughs> it's not easy. You have to really wait for it. So my fellow African youth, please stop the laziness and go to work. And please kindly stop using these dirty routes to get to Europe or America to become successful. There is greener pastures in Africa. Look for it here on the continent. And don't risk your life dying in the ocean just to become rich in Europe or to go to Europe or America to seek greener pastures. No, you can do work in Africa, especially to the guys who are in the cities who are not able to get jobs, to the guys who are the villages who are not able to get jobs. This is the jobs. You know what? This particular leaf that I'm holding is just leaves for granite. That is granite leaves or peanut leaves. In a dry season, it is very expensive during the dry season. It's even hard to get it to buy during the dry season. So when you are able to use your time to gather all of this during the dry season, you can sell it and make some big profits. And you can use that money to start any kind of business of your choice. So think twice and then hard, okay? So family, this is where I'm coming to the end of today's video. On behalf of my workers and our community, I say a very big thank you to you all for your time and your patience that you used to watch. And I say a very big thank you to you all for your support, your continuous support to make my channel grow. I salute and appreciate you so much. And to the new subscribers, I say welcome on board. Uh, the train is not full yet. The train is still running, so it's unstoppable. We will continue to rise and rise and rise. Forward ever, backward never. And to those who are livestock farmers, crop farmers, vegetable farmers, people who are planting trees, fruit trees, or any kind of trees, that you are planting anybody that is involved in agriculture please keep the energy going keep the work going and never give up because agriculture is the backbone of the world like it or not believe it or not it is just what it is agriculture is what is what controls the world it is agriculture that is generally controlling the world even when you have money and there's no food you can't survive because you can't eat the money and go to sleep. You can't also chop the money and go to sleep. You have to really eat food before you go to sleep. It is the money that you use to eat the food or to buy the food and eat. So let's continue to think about this and work towards building Mama Africa and the world. So I say, a very, I say a very big thank you to you all for your time. Like I said, I appreciate you so much and I love you. Mm -hmm. Stay blessed, stay focused and keep rising. One love.